So we can move straight on to compile the other GCC 2.7.2.3. As I said previously, it does suggest that we should be in the normal Linux system to compile it. But um, when I did this, I thought, well, I'll try it here because we've got the compiler built. We've got the glibc installed and tested. We've got all the other programs available to do compiling. Um, why not try to do it here? And it, it did run fine. So um, there's only one thing I had to do, uh, which is actually mentioned here. I had to specify the host. Um, it does say if the configure script can't determine the system type. So I don't know under what conditions it can and can't. But once I had set that, um, everything worked fine. So what I'm going to do now is go back to sources. I'm going to tidy up the two folders we've got, which is the original source. And the work directory we had, GCC install. Now I'm going to extract the 2.7 version with GCC. Pipe that through tar. Okay, so the keyboard's not set, so I need to actually type the bar as it would be if it's on an American keyboard, which is defaulted to. Because remember, we've still got a very basic system here. There's virtually no system configuration done at all. Uh, it's just a bunch of programs that have been compiled to work in this environment. Okay, so that's extracted. Now it says configure the package by running configure. So full stop, forward slash configure. Oh, sorry, we should change into it first, of course. So configure minus minus prefix equals forward slash user forward slash GCC 2723. So basically it's installing this GCC in its own named directory so that we know it's separate from the system GCC and enable shared enable shared so let's just check that's written okay gcc user gcc2723 yep so let's start the configuration off so it hasn't complained about not knowing what the host is this time whereas it had done originally for me so that's interesting And it's come up with an i586 unknown Linux. So that should be fine because an i586 is what I would enter here, as it says here. So now we've got to build the compiler in several stages. The first thing we do is we run make languages equals C.
Okay, so that's finished. So we'll move on to the next bit, which is make stage one. And ignore errors about files not found. Okay, so we can ignore those. That's fine. So now we move on to making the first, looks like we make uh, GCC twice and then compare the two to make sure that it's built correctly. So let's see how long each of these stages takes. Uh, stage one forward slash XGCC minus B stage one forward slash quotes C flags equals quotes g space minus o2 so for a presenter just going to double check what i've typed right so that should be minus g2 okay that looks all right
Okay, that's done. So now we can run stage two. And again, we've got some no such file directory. Um, but I presume we can just ignore the errors about these files not being found. So I'll just run the next command for stage two. Change that one and that one. The rest is the same. Let's just double check. Make CC equals stage two GCC. Yep. So wait for that to finish.
Okay, so that's finished. So now I'm going to run make and compare. And I presume this is comparing the two different stages to make sure that the compilation is correct. Uh, there's no differences reported. So we can type the make install command in. Stage two forward slash XGCC minus B stage two forward slash close quote C flags equals quote minus G minus O2. Just check that again. Make install CC equals stage two forward slash GCC. Minus B stage two forward slash quote C flags equals quote minus G minus O two. So that looks okay. So now if I run um, CC minus minus version, we should still have our two dot nine five dot two, which we have. GCC version should produce the same and then if we run user bin uh, no not user bin it's user GCC 2723 bin forward slash GCC minus minus version we should get the old version which we just installed which we do so that's fine So we can move on now, see what comes next. Okay, the next bit needs to be done in the normal Linux system since we need a text editor. We need the util Linux package again for this section. Um, it says if you haven't deleted it, you can use you can skip the first two steps. Well, I, I like to delete the sources to make sure that whatever I'm doing, I'm starting off from a fresh um, build or built uh, yeah, fresh set of sources rather than something that's been used before and possibly contaminated. So um, we need to unmount, or sorry, remount the, um, well, we need to unmount the SUS 6.1 partition, which as I say, it probably wasn't absolutely necessary. So I'll unmount that. And we need to remount the uh, root of the LFS drive to make it read only to ensure, because it's not a completely sh a clean shutdown, or I can't be sure that it's a clean shutdown, to make sure that um, when we do shut down that uh, it's not going to put any errors on onto the file structure. So I'll try to just shut down again. It seemed to have worked before. And yep, yeah, that's done. So I can just turn it off now. Right, so here we are back at the remote terminal. And you can see all I've got to do next is to tidy up the GCC 2.7.2.3 directory. As we won't be needing that anymore. Well, hopefully we won't. And then we can move on to the next section, 